Hello, this is Reverend Don Lewis coming to you from beautiful central Illinois. And today our question comes to us from Porpoise Fathom. And Porpoise Fathom asks why it is that you see the pentacle everywhere. And he remarks that you see it every place from the military to the media to the Christian church among pagans and Christians, everywhere. And he asks if it is a symbol that should be thought of as spiritual or sinister, as subliminal or suggestive, if it has some deep psychological connotation that people respond to but do not realize. And I think my answer to this is really rather simpler than those suggestions. I think a lot of it is habit. The pentacle, which is the five-pointed star with or without a circle, is one of humankind's oldest continually used religious symbols. It's been in use since the first dynasties of ancient Egypt for 5,000 years at least, and probably goes back farther that we just don't really know about. And it's something you also see reflected in nature. We see it in the petals of many flowers, we see it in the seeds of certain fruits. So I think it does have a certain psychological resonance with people who are familiar with these aspects of nature, but the other thing is it's just been there forever, and it's been used as a religious symbol by the ancient Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, medieval and renaissance Christians right up until the modern day, and certainly in every field of metaphysics, it's been very widespread. And so I don't think it's really surprising that it's everywhere. And of course the other thing about it, it's very easy to draw. It's a very simple symbol, and it not only has an ancient religious significance, but for many years it's also been used in secular contexts to draw attention to things that you want to put a star by. And it has also always had that secular connotation of just a star. So I don't think there's anything surprising in the fact that such an ancient symbol should be so widespread. I think it would rather be more surprising if it wasn't. And in the end, I think that a lot of it is habit. The fact that it is an old and comfortable symbol with many different meanings and understandings in different contexts. So I think it will be with us for many generations to come and that different groups will continue to look at it through their own eyes, even as the many different religious groups we've mentioned have each had their own subtle differences in how they've used it, ranging from the Egyptians to the Pythagoreans to the Christians. So I hope that gives you something to think about, and until next time, may you blessed be. The Common Book of Wicca and Witchcraft is envisioned as a copyright-free collection of spells, chants, rituals, and commentary dealing with Wicca and witchcraft in general, which people can draw upon whenever they like without having to worry about copyright, attribution, and the politics that sometimes accompany these things in our community. I think it's a wonderful idea, I certainly plan to contribute to it, and I hope that you'll join me in supporting it. You can learn more about the Common Book of Wicca and Witchcraft, as well as supporting the Indiegogo campaign for it, at the following address, witchlibrary.com. I hope you'll go and have a look at it, and I hope you'll join me in supporting it. And until next time, may you blessed be.